Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Night Run Studio and we're making a Metroidvania in Unity. So far we've got our character moving around and animated, we've added a tile map, but we've got this problem where we can just do that. It would sure be nice if the camera followed our player and so in this video we're going to take a look at the Cinemachine package, we're going to get it installed and look at some of the must-have features in that package. That's where we're headed in this video, let's get started. Let's start by getting this thing installed. So we'll go into package management, package manager, and in here you'll notice that we can see what is currently in the project and also what is in the registry. If you're working with an older version of Unity, it also has both of these boxes, they're just arranged a little differently. We'll go to the registry here and just search Cinemachine and then go ahead and install it. Now before we put that camera to work, let's just look at the other option. Often beginners will try this out first and it is a workable solution. You could just take your main camera and make it a child of the player. Then when you hit play, you do get a situation where the camera follows the player. However, you'll notice that when I switch from side to side, it's kind of harsh and jittery and the jump especially is really quite harsh. There are ways to work around this, but the main camera just isn't really built for this. That's why Cinemachine exists. So what exactly is Cinemachine? Well, it's a package that allows us to install virtual cameras, which can take over our main camera and have it operate in special ways. Let's get our first setup. So we'll go to Cinemachine. And here there's a whole bunch to choose from. Some of them are 2D, some 3D, but we're gonna go to targeted cameras and select the 2D camera specifically. To help stay organized, I'll just move the camera up top here. And you'll notice now if we go into game view that we can see these gizmos here showing where the camera's focused. It's in the middle of nowhere. So let's go over to this tracking target box and drag our player in there. Now the camera centers on the player though it's really zoomed out. For this, we can use our lens size in order to zoom in to a smaller field of view or a larger one. And now when we hit play, we've already got a follow camera working and it's actually working better than the main camera did in that it's got just a slight delay when we move and then it also follows us smoothly so you don't get that jerky pull every time you change direction. Now that amount of zoom made me feel just a little claustrophobic so I'm gonna zoom back a bit, but now I don't particularly like the way that this is centering on the player. This is where the Cinemachine Position Composer is really helpful. You can head on down to our target tracking and change the offset, making it so the camera always stays just a little above the player or however you want to offset it. Now in case you want to play with these features to get them just right well in game mode, you can click save during play so that any changes you make will be preserved even after you stop the play mode. Another cool feature worth exploring here is the look ahead function, which is the ability to make it so that the camera actually moves ahead of you as you push a direction. So let's set it with a really high time and low smoothing so we can see how this really functions. And you'll notice, well, that's pretty horrific. It kind of shoots way ahead of the player whenever I push a button, which gives us the ability to see incoming enemies and that sort of thing, or incoming obstacles before we get to them, which is quite helpful. That said, this is pretty extreme. The next feature I'd like to look at is the dead zone. What this does is create a box around the player, and as long as our player's focus is within that box, the camera won't move. This is great because sometimes, say if you're sidling up to the edge of a cliff or something, you don't want the camera jittering every time you do a little tap of the button. In this way, if we're making small movements, the camera just stays fixed, and only when we're actually moving in a direction does the camera move check in. Another really important feature with the camera is the ability to confine the camera so that it's not showing off areas you don't want the player to see. For this, we can use an extension on the virtual camera. And what it does is, as the name suggests, it confines the camera to a set location. So let's go ahead and set this up. Over in our hierarchy now, we're gonna create an empty game object. We'll just call it Confiner. And we're gonna add a polygon collider on here. Make sure that you click is trigger. Otherwise the collider will actually kick your camera out of the area you want it to be in which is not the desired effect. At this point, you can click Edit Collider and just kind of drag the edges of this polygon into the shape of where you want the camera to actually be able to go. Now that that's all set up, let's click on our Cinemachine camera, go to the extensions here, and then go ahead and add that Confiner 2D. You'll notice that it wants to know what the bounding shape is, and this is where we'll drag our Confiner into that space. Our camera now won't be able to leave there. We can then move the Confiner up here where the rest of our camera stuff is, and since this is starting to get kind of busy, let's use an empty to create a new game object called camera. Make sure that its transform is zeroed out, which is just good practice. And then take all of our camera stuff and drag it under there. That way we can hide it up at the top without it taking up valuable real estate here in the hierarchy. Now when we press play, no matter where the player tries to go, he can't get the camera to go where it's not allowed. So even if I jump over in this direction, you'll notice the camera never actually leaves the area that I want the player to see. All right, that's working pretty nicely. Now, one last feature that I wanna tell you about is the Pixel Perfect camera. 
And what this does is it controls the orthographic size of your camera so that it always displays your pixels perfectly. Now to do this, what we're gonna do is actually go to our main camera where we can add the pixel perfect camera. Here, it's gonna ask what your pixels per unit is. We're using 16 and also your reference resolution. I'm just gonna go with 1920 by 1080, which is what my game view is currently rendering in. Now at this point, we can click on our Cinemachine camera and we're gonna add the extension for the Cinemachine Pixel Perfect. There's no features to add here, but now it's gonna make it so that our Cinemachine camera works together with the Pixel Perfect camera. And here you can just see that if I toggle the Pixel Perfect camera on and off, you can see it just makes a slight shift in the background pixels so that everything lines up nicely on a Pixel Perfect grid. Now, a note about this. If we head up to our projection, you can see that orthographic camera is the current projection for this camera and it's locked, meaning we can't change it. That's because Pixel Perfect is designed to only work with an orthographic camera. Often in Unity games, we use a perspective camera in order to simulate a parallax effect, which is absolutely the easiest way to do that. That said, if you use a perspective camera when trying to render parallax with pixel art, you're never going to be able to get a perfectly smooth pixel perfect effect as the pixels change size when they're further away or closer, meaning you get a jittery, noisy kind of feel. So in this project, we're actually gonna stick with the orthographic camera and I'll show in the next video how to achieve a really nice smooth parallax effect using an orthographic camera. Anyways, that's for the next video. I hope you found this one helpful. Until next time, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.